this church. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. I feel the Holy Spirit. That ain't what I wanted to say. I wanted to say I feel the Holy Ghost. There's a difference when sometimes you say Holy Spirit, you're trying to be, you know, a little proper, but I feel the Holy Ghost. We're in the middle of a miracle. I don't know if anybody else understands what's happening, but I've been in church my whole life and I've never seen anything like this. We're in the middle of a miracle. Oh, yes, we are. This ain't L.A. or New York City. This is Greenville, South Carolina. And the Holy Ghost had decided to stop by. We're in the middle of a miracle. We're in the middle of a miracle. The Lord told me that there is a woman in this church right now who has anointing oil in her purse. Who are you and where are you? Is that you, Mother? Bring me that anointing oil, please. Somebody in here is getting ready to be completely healed. Where's the first hand I saw? Where'd she go? Come on. Y'all come here. Stand right here. Come on, mother. Come on, mother. What's your name? Miss Williams? Where are you from, Miss Williams? Georgia? Stay in Greenville now, but you were born and raised in Georgia. What'd you say, Mama? What'd you say? Huh? Can I see the soil? told me there was a fragrant oil. That's the fragrant oil. What's your name? Miss Elaine, Miss Fetter. Thank God for you. Miss Williams? Miss Williams and Miss Fetter. And what's your name? Thomasina. I got four. Four is the number of deliverance. I got my four. Now listen to me. Listen to me. I know what the Holy Ghost said. And I'm going to need y'all to trust me on this. This oil is going to stay on my hands to the end of this service. But if you have cancer, diabetes, if you have any blood issues, arthritis, any of those sicknesses, I just need you to go ahead and begin thanking the Lord now, even if you're online, because I'm stretching my hands to our online campus as a point of contact. Matthew chapter 16. I feel the Holy Ghost, but I, I, got to, I have to give the word first. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven, and I also say to you that you are Peter. And upon this rock,
my church. The relentless church. I said the relentless church. 37 of y'all caught it. The rest of y'all still trying to figure it out. Jesus had this church in mind when he declared this. Not relentless church, the relentless church. We're still in the relentless series. And Jesus says, upon this rock, I'll build my... It's too quiet. I'll build my... And the gates of Hades shall not prevail. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I need my elders and ministers here quickly. You've got 30 seconds. Elders and ministers, quickly. Elders, ministers. Elders and ministers. Elders and ministers. Elders and ministers. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Grab my hand. Just grab my hand. Come, 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 come. Elders and ministers. Elders and ministers. Pastor Avington, did you get some oil? You got the oil. You already had the oil. Elders and ministers. Quickly, quickly, quickly. This is what's getting ready to happen. Who didn't, it's disappointing, I just need the oil that's on, that was put on my hands to be on the elders. Come on, come on. Y'all get to me, I can't get over there, I'm gonna fall, come on. I promise I took a shower, I don't stink. Here's what's getting ready to happen. I'm going to get to a certain point, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to the scripture in James. Is any among you sick? When I get there, I don't want them to come to the altar. I want you to go to them. Because here's what's getting ready to happen. The Holy Ghost is getting ready to meet you where you are. Because some of y'all took all your strength just to come in. So we gonna meet you where you are. If we got to climb over pews, that devil's getting out of here today. If we got to throw your walker out, you're going to get healed today. Because we did not come with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of power in the Holy Ghost. Elders, ministers, pastors, prepare yourself. Pastor Todd, did you shake my hand? I don't think you did. Did you? Okay. Anna, Pastor, all right. Okay, go back to your seats for now. I've got to teach for about 10 minutes. <laughs> Pastor Oz? Somebody say the relentless church. It began with a question on a walk. I saw you when you were walking in church this morning with your wife, sir. Striped shirt. I saw you. You know why? Because my shoes match your shirt. And I saw you walking. You had your glasses on, didn't you? It was hot outside. You need your glasses. And I didn't know that I would see you. But the Holy Ghost said, if you see him, then you know to send him the word. But it just broke in your favor. What you've been needing and what you've been praying for and what she's been praying for just happened for you. I don't know what. It just broke in your favor. You're getting ready to see the miracle. While you were walking, chains were falling off of you. And it ain't just for you. It's for all the men in your family and for the ones that are coming after you. And the enemy fought so hard because he knew that you were the key. But today, everything that has tried to stop you will have to bow down before you. And your name will go around the world 
for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you will reach people that no one else can ever reach. And you will preach not with your words, but with the life you live. There's power in your mouth and power in your hands. Your grandmother prayed for this moment. And the answer is, yeah, I have called you. I have chosen you. And it is me. And I have not changed my mind. And you couldn't run even when you tried. And everything the devil tried to do has failed. There have been strong angels keeping you alive. Now you walk into your purpose and your destiny. And it shall be as I say. You have stepped in to your destiny. question was asked, Pastor Aventer, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? This, Sophia, was a question that Jesus asked to the disciples. Elder Shockley, it was a significant question because Jesus was asking, not because he didn't know who he was, but he needed to know if the Holy Spirit had revealed to the people he was walking with who he was. The reason why Jesus was waiting on the Holy Spirit to reveal who he was is because until those walking with him knew who he was, they could not execute the vision that God had given him. I can only take you so far if you see me as the guy who used to come visit. I can only take you so far if you still see me as Pastor Ron's replacement, which I am not. Because I cannot replace a great man of God. I can only do what God has called me to do and be the continuation. And we will always honor Apostle Ron and Pastor Hope and the legacy of redemption. But God has now declared relentless. Watch this. And redemption still remains. And that work will continue. But if you're called here, you're called to now go to another place with a new vision and fresh leadership. But I can't force you to see me. Woo. The Lord has to reveal to you who I am. But it didn't come in some place of confrontation. It came in a walk. Walk with me. See, because when you're walking with somebody, you're disarmed. You're just having conversation. And Jesus was like, okay, these guys, you guys have seen me do some miracles. You've heard me teach. But do you know who I am? So he said, who, who, who do men say that I am? And they gave their answers or what they thought were the answers. And then he said, that's good. Because what he was saying is you keep your ear to the ground. What are people saying about me? And, and has what they said about me impacted how you see me? Then he said, okay, I hear what they're saying. Who do you say that I am? And there were many people who said what they heard, but only one got the revelation. Peter was like, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the unique propitiation, the the payment for the sins of all mankind. You are the unique son of God sent to save us from our sins. You are Yeshua HaMashiach. You are Mashiach, the Messiah. You are the one prophesied. You are the one that will redeem the whole world. You are the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And Jesus said, ah, finally, the Holy Spirit has given revelation to the people. Now I am unlocked to be what I was called to be in the earth. Some of y'all are waiting on me. God's waiting on you. <laughs> Pastor DeMarcus, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Who do men say that I am? Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, blessed are you. You didn't make this up. The Holy Ghost told you that. And I say, you're no longer 
Simon, you're... See, when you get a revelation, you get a name change. When you walk into a new revelation, you get a name change. We thank the Lord for what was. A new revelation is upon us, and so now God has declared a new name. Same man, different name. Same building. And upon this rock, not the man, the revelation he got from the Holy Ghost, because men will fail you, but the Holy Ghost is unstoppable. Oh, I wish somebody got excited about the Holy Ghost because we need the Holy Spirit in order to do the work of ministry. We need the Holy Spirit so we can walk out our purpose. We need the Holy Spirit so we can cast out devils. We need the Holy Spirit so healing can show up. So the foundational question, Elder Lori, is who is Jesus? More importantly, who is Jesus to you? If you're going to take notes, this will be the time, but if not, just watch it later because I'm sure somebody will be putting it online in 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to find you. Don't edit it out either. Who is Jesus? Is he uh, your Sunday morning fling? Or is he the one that you build your entire life around? And how you see Jesus is often how you see people. We have a great struggle in the church right now with identity. We're not sure if we want to be political, social, or spiritual. The challenge is that we are spiritual first, and it has more authority than any other thing. But if we walk out the word, it will impact our politics. It will impact society. Because politicians change, the word does not. Society changes, the word does not. And if you're looking for a preacher that'll change with the times, you got the wrong one. I'm not changing to fit society. I'm not here to be popular. I don't care if you like me. I'm going to preach this book until I die. All 66, the Old Testament is the shadow of God. The New Testament in Jesus is the substance of God. And we're going to honor the whole thing. Take the lessons, spit out the bones, and we will move forward. And we're going to build God's church. The relentless church is an unstoppable church. The relentless church is an immovable church. The relentless church is a diverse church. The relentless church is a loving church. The relentless church is a church that fights for people. The relentless church is one that starts with honor first. The relentless church reserves judgment for God. The relentless church loves everybody. Love does not mean agreement. Let's get that out the way because people use the word love and says, well, if you love me, then you'll let me do. No, no, no. My mother loved me enough to discipline me when I was wrong. Sometimes the greatest act of love is to tell somebody the truth. I don't have no help at the 9 a.m., but I'm going to preach it anyway. What was he building? Who is Jesus and what was he building? He said, upon this rock I'll build. Whose church? His church. It's very important for you to understand there's a difference between ownership and stewardship. We don't own the church because we did not found the church. I'm the pastor of this local flock, but I have someone that I honor who is above me. His name is Jesus. It's his church. I don't hold on to people. 
I've been around real insecure pastors who get mad and say, that preacher that came and took my members. Yo, members, I didn't see you on the cross. I didn't, I didn't see you up there. I didn't know your name was on any of these songs. I didn't know I was supposed to be singing to you. You don't own people. You don't own the church. The church belongs to Jesus. We are stewards of the church. Who is Jesus? What was he building? And who's allowed to come? Those are the three questions. And if you want to hear all of it, you're going to have to come back to 11. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Who is Jesus? He is the unique son of God sent to save us from our sins. Who he is is very different than what he looks like. I'm going to leave that alone because I know that's real touchy because when we were at my uncle's funeral this week, and I want to give honor to my mother who buried her brother this week and still drove from Cincinnati to be with us this morning. And you knew him all 75 of your years. He died at 77. He died in peace and he was buried in honor. And he was a good man. And so I offer as your son and also as your pastor my condolences to you because I know what he meant to you. But as I was saying this idea of who is Jesus? Some people still get caught up in what he looked like. You know, in the, the chapel where Uncle Emmett's funeral was, there was a, a stained glass. And there was a man there with long brown hair, shoulder length, full beard, and his skin was white. And my son said, is that Jesus? I said, well, that's who the artist depicted as Jesus. He was like, what? <laughs> I'm six. <laughs> I said, that's the picture that they put, but scripture says he had hair like lamb's wool, skin like bronze. And I know people say, well, his skin doesn't matter. Well, if it doesn't matter, then show him how the Bible says. It's real quiet. The reason why I bring it up is because people have manipulated other people using scripture to do it. We need to stop playing with the word and let the word be the word. I don't care what color he was as long as his blood was red. But don't use his skin color to make one people group more powerful than another. When you dishonor scripture and manipulate scripture, what you're really saying is, I have an agenda. And we're not going to play agendas. The only thing that's in here, the preeminence in this room is the blood of Jesus. We won't play identity politics and cultural politics with the word of God. We won't dishonor him by playing race games. He wasn't a black American. He wasn't a white American. He was a Middle Eastern Jew. And whatever they look like, that's what he looked like. But don't try to make him look like you so you can put other people below you. And that goes for everybody. Not bind that devil. Somebody needs to give God praise. We're all equal in here. I said, we're all equal in here. Don't care where you come from, what you look like, how much money you have, we are all equal in here. And we are gonna see healing come to the nation. I'm prophesying, I'm prophesying. We're gonna see healing come to this nation because of what happens in this room. Like Miss Williams and Miss Vetter, black women who come from a different age, in their lifetime, they couldn't eat at the same restaurant at the same time but came to an altar with oil for the same Jesus. I wish I had 17 people that would get out of their seats and get in the aisle and give God a crazy, rowdy, radical praise. Different color, same Jesus. Different zip code, same Jesus. Different background, same Jesus. What? Saint Jesus is 
It's the same Jesus. Different colors. Same Jesus. Who is Jesus? What was he building? He wasn't building buildings, coach. He was building people. Oh, don't sit down. Service almost over. He was building people. When Christ crashed the sky, he ain't bringing these pews. You think heaven needs lights? You think they're gonna, excuse me. Um, my name is Michael, I'm an archangel. Can we borrow your LED board? We sure could use it in heaven. You think Jesus was on a cross dying for this building? He was on that cross for you. And his church has to look like what he loved. And who did he love? Well, you got to go to Matthew 22, 1 through 14. And there was a, a parable of the wedding feast. And the, the king had invited all of the flashy people, the famous people, the popular people. And they played him and said, I'm not coming. He got angry. Then he said, hey, all my servants, go out to the highways and hedges. Whoa, watch this and I'm going to be done. Watch this. I love this. I'm going to go all the way down. And it says, so those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. This is going to mess with religious people who think that Jesus only loves the good ones. It's going to mess you up. Because God's going to sit you next to somebody you think you're better than. And he's going to be like, y'all the same in my eyes. I come from a different area code. Yeah. So what? Because your area code don't change the condition of your soul. Both bad and good. The ones that know all the words of the songs. And the ones that came in smelling like weed. The ones that's been faithful their whole life and the ones that's cheating right now, they were all invited. You don't get to decide who gets to walk through these doors. There are some people who want the church to be filled with perfect people who think like them and look like them and act like them. And that's pride. The church is for broken people. I grew up at a small Baptist church in Cincinnati. And they had stained glass windows with the different color glass. Broken pieces of glass connected to make a whole picture. All we are are broken pieces of glass designed for the light of the gospel to reflect through us. I'm okay by myself, but I'm beautiful when I'm connected to you. We are stained glass, broken people, and all of us need the light of Christ's glory to shine through us. We all need a savior. Nobody's better than another. The Bible says both bad and good came into the wedding feast. So if you saved and been saved your whole life, he doesn't look at you any different than the person that's about to join in the next three minutes. We are the relentless church. We give honor. We fight for one another. We lay down our politics when we walk in here. We don't disrespect authority. We don't disrespect our leaders. We pray for them. If you're looking for me to bash leaders, whether independent, Democrat, or Republican, you won't find it here. I'm not going to dishonor, and I won't play politics. And if you don't like that, Lord bless you. There are plenty of churches that you can go to. But in here, we're going to preach the word. We're going to pray for our leaders, and we're going to fight. Because here's the thing. 
Even in your family, everybody doesn't agree, but it don't change the blood. And if that's your physical family, how much more the blood of Christ, which unifies us. My wife prophesied that one day, clansmen are going to walk in here with their hoods and lay them down at the altar. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hug him because he's my brother. Because if he can give his life to Jesus, if God can't save him, he can't save me. There is no big sin and little sin. We're all the same in here. We are the relentless church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. If you need healing in your body, remain standing. Everybody else sit down. If you need healing anywhere in your body, remain standing. Elders, ministers, y'all get up. If they're standing, you go put your hands on them. You ain't got to pray long. We don't have time. I want you to just grab their hand as a point of contact. And when you have been touched by an elder or a pastor, again, don't pray long. We don't have time for 45 second prayer. You got to touch and keep it moving. Listen to me. We are a church that doesn't just preach the word. We are a church that will watch God for demonstration. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 3. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. We're going to preach the word, but we're also going to see miracles. Did you hear what I said? No, some of y'all think this is a game. This is not a game to me. This is not a church, and it isn't the gospel unless I preach Jesus and people get healed and delivered because that's what the Bible says. We got to have some signs. So cancer can't stay at Relentless Church. Nobody, that's okay. Somebody believes me. We have to go. We are the church. Know who Jesus is. Know what he's building and know who he invited. So you don't get to look at anybody because they're covered in tattoos. Because they smell like liquor. Just because they couldn't hide theirs and you put yours under the sink. We're going to treat everybody right in here. Some people need to get saved today, Pastor Aventure. Would you join me on this platform, sweet lady? Show fine self. <laughs> Hate to see you leave. Love to watch you walk away. <laughs> if you need to get saved, this is your moment. If you want to join Relentless Church, this is your moment. If you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, this is your moment. This altar is now open for those who Jesus died for, whether that's brand new salvation, rededication, or you know the Lord is calling you to be a member of this church, a part of this vision, a part of the mosaic. You have exactly 27 seconds to get your things and run down front if I'm talking to you. 27, 26. Don't move slow. 25. 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 7, 16, 15. Run. I see you, man of God. I see your little son with you. Look at him running. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, if somebody's in front of you, tell them, excuse me, run, run, run. If you don't have to leave, don't leave. Relentless love. All right, I'll give you 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 
two, one. Y'all scoot up. I don't stink. Get up here. Is this your son? Hey, young man. What's your name? Kingston? You're a handsome boy, Kingston. You're a leader. Kingston, I see it on you, and you know you're a leader. And today is your birthday. Come on up here, Kingston. Are you coming to join Relentless Church, or are you coming to give your life to Jesus? Say it again. Both. Somebody needs to know that on his birthday, he got his birthday. They're still coming, Pastor Darius. They're still coming. They're still coming. Pray this prayer with me, everybody at the altar. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I thank you that I am a part of the Relentless Church. Not just this local church, but the global church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We are relentless. I thank you and I declare you are my savior and my Lord. In Jesus name, I'm brand new and this is family. Amen, amen, and amen. We believe if you prayed that simple prayer, you just got saved. And on behalf of me, Pastor Aventer, and Kingston, we say welcome to the Relentless Church family.